we're taking a look at how Japanese companies are moving towards a carbon neutral future. The marine transport industry plays a crucial role in the global economy. Not only does it keep trade moving, it also helps in the development of many countries. But can such a vital industry do better when it comes to going green? The marine transport industry accounts for nearly 3% of global CO2 emissions. That's about the same as what a single country like Germany emits, so it's not something we can ignore. Marine transport is essential for economic activity around the world, and reducing CO2 emissions is a pressing issue. Mitsui OSK Lines, or MOL, is a global player in the marine transport industry. The company can trace its roots back more than 130 years, but it is now investing in innovations that it hopes will take it firmly into the future. This is the city of Sasebo in the Kyushu region of Japan. It's a historic port town, so it's fitting that it's where MOL is building a groundbreaking type of ship that it hopes will help with its decarbonization efforts. First up, an innovative sail that will help harness the power of wind, just like in the golden age of sea exploration. General Manager of the Technical Division, Yoshihiko Sugimoto, gives us a tour. This is a 40% scale model of the actual hard sail, which is about 54 meters high and 15 meters wide. To put that into perspective, that's the height of a 17-story building. It will depend on the size of the ship and the route, but we estimate that our ship equipped with the sail this time will cut greenhouse gas emissions by about 8% when traveling from Japan to the western coast of North America. A key characteristic of the sail is that it is adjustable. By expanding and shrinking, it can most efficiently catch the wind. Another advantage of being adjustable is that it offers a clear line of sight from the bridge when entering or leaving a port, and it also allows safe passage under bridges. But the biggest advantage is in open waters. At sea, there are times when the wind is too strong and can put too much pressure on the sail. This system allows the sail to be retracted to safely propel the ship. Additionally, the sail can be turned, allowing the ship to move forward not just with a tailwind, but also into a headwind much like a yacht. Following tests of the demonstration model, MOL has started building a ship which will be equipped with the sail. As you can imagine, such massive sails must be lightweight as well as durable. The sail is made of glass fiber reinforced plastic, otherwise known as GFRP, the same material commonly used in aircraft, wind power plants, and automobiles. Next year, we'll be launching a ship equipped with a hard sail and propelled by wind energy with the aim of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. That first ship is planned to be a bulker that carries coal. If all goes well, the sails will then be equipped on various types of vessels, including tankers and LNG carriers. The project is part of the Wind Challenger project. The Wind Challenger project was launched in 2009 under a project led by the University of Tokyo to strengthen collaboration between industry and academia. We're working together with the university, research institutions, manufacturers, shipbuilders, and others to equip and operate the ship with the sail. And it's not just the sails. The company believes it can go even greener by combining use of the sails with other energy conservation technologies. Even at its head office, MOL has established a centralized management system for its entire fleet of 800 vessels. Its safety operations supporting center not only monitors the vessels in real time, but it also collects other data that will help a ship's captain make the right decision. 
As you can see here, we send ships weather information, such as on typhoons and storms, to help them avoid dangerous conditions. In contrast, under the Wind Challenger project, we take advantage of wind. If we spot adverse weather, such as a strong breeze, we can advise the ship that it's the perfect condition to set sail. By utilizing all the data collected in real time by their vessels operating around the world, MOL can realize efficient wind use on truly a global scale. From Wind Challenger to Wind Hunter, MOL reveals more of its carbon neutral plans. Now, before the break, we took a look at new energy efficient sails being produced by Mitsui OSK lines. But the Japanese marine transport company has its sights set on zero emissions with its Wind Hunter project. This is a model of a hydrogen producing ship. By applying this technology, there is absolutely no need for refueling, and it can sail around the world and transport goods by using just wind. We're aiming for the ultimate form of zero emissions. And to help achieve that target, tests of hydrogen-related equipment have been launched. In strong winds, propulsion created by sails would turn propellers, which would then power turbines to generate electricity, which in turn would power an electrolyzer that can produce hydrogen from water and store it. In times of weak wind, that hydrogen is then put through onboard fuel cells, which can then create a further source of electricity to help power the propellers and thus the ship itself. Although current tests are on smaller yachts like this, the aim is to build some of the world's biggest hydrogen producing vessels and cargo ships that will also use wind power. We're aiming to launch hydrogen powered cargo ships by about 2030. These ships will also need to be able to harness wind, so we're looking at developing applications, such as auto navigation systems. Currently, we're working on a broad range of designs and technologies to make such ships viable. MOL says it already has solutions that will help it achieve zero emissions. These include the use of cleaner alternative fuels. MOL currently has two LNG bunkering vessels with another under construction. One is Gas Vitality, preparing to start operations in France. The other, Gas Agility, has been deployed from its home port of Rotterdam since November of last year. Currently, most commercial vessels use fuel oil with a sulfur content of 0.5% or less to power engines. But data shows a switch to liquid natural gas can help reduce CO2 emissions by as much as 25 to 30%. It also reduces emissions of nitrogen oxide by 85% and eliminates sulfur altogether. But the switch over to LNG isn't easy. Supply infrastructure is needed which is why the LNG bunkering vessels are key. Gas Vitality and Gas Agility, which MOL is jointly operating with Total Energies, not only eliminate the need to build large LNG fueling stations, but also mean ships make less journeys. A bunkering vessel can simply travel to where a ship is and refuel it while it is anchored. MOL is also working to develop ships that run on alternative fuels, such as synthetic methane or ammonia. It's even close to manufacturing a fully electric tanker. The company has also been ramping up its decarbonization efforts in other areas. It recently expanded into the ocean transport of liquefied carbon dioxide, a crucial component of carbon capture and storage. I visited MOL's headquarters to speak with the company's president and CEO, Takeshi Hashimoto. Why is MOL focusing on decarbonizing its operations? 
Based on our experience, we've seen dramatic changes in the needs of our customers. I recognize many of them are no longer simply satisfied with ensuring safety, stability, and low costs, and become more eager for reducing the burden placed on the environment, including GHG emission. We will continue pursuing a more innovative environmental policy and become a leader in the industry. We have set our corporate mission. From the blue oceans, we sustain people's lives and ensure a prosperous future. And we have been striving to provide even better services more efficiently to make the lives of people around the world more fulfilling and convenient. We will continue making contributions in this regard. In addition, we have redefined our role as part of the social infrastructure industry to make the world's environment better so that we will continue to be a company that provides even better services that the world needs. As a measure to conserve energy and operate ships efficiently, we will utilize wind as ship propulsion using glass fiber reinforced plastic sails. As solutions to decarbonization, we will proceed with combining wind propulsion and environmentally friendly alternative fuels including LNG, ammonia and hydrogen. That's the future according to Mitsui OSK Lines. As we've shown in the report, the company is taking its target of net zero emissions by 2050 very seriously. From using traditional renewable sources such as wind, to developing new technologies such as ammonia or hydrogen powered vessels.